Okay, good morning. <clears throat> so, today I want to teach a minute. I want to pray for you all. And I want to prophesy as the Lord leads into some of your lives. It's cold downstairs. <laughs> I found this really cute hat at the thrift store yesterday. I had a doctor's appointment. Any of you guys thrift store junkies? <laughs> I love thrift stores. I actually used to have a resale shop. We're hoping to open a thrift store for the uh, ministry in spring or winter next year. So, uh, good morning, Lisa. Anyway, I was at this doctor's appointment. While some people are hopping on, I'll tell my little story. I was at this doctor's appointment, and or I went to it, and the doctor had not sent my referral over. And so it was 30 minutes from my house. I'd already settled my daughter in with her nap with my husband. And here I was 30 minutes away from the house and I put in thrift store. <laughs> and this thrift store was a block away. It was a warehouse. I got my daughter so many, I got her whole winter wardrobe. And I mean, just the cutest name brand, nice stuff. And I, got, I found this hat, <laughs> which I love. If you guys remember them, uh, the giraffe kind of is an Asher symbol. So we're, we're hoping to adopt this within the year. And um, so it's kind of significant. But anyway, I am not here to talk about my thrift shopping. I am here to talk about the Lord and to help, um, help us all just focus on Him, focus on His Word, and, and be battle ready. I want to talk about the full armor of God. Don't hang up. Don't click off saying, I already know this. I've read this. We cannot hear this enough. Every, you, hold on. You guys share this. Tag some people. I'm going to talk for a minute about um, how to keep the enemy forces from taking us down. How to ready ourselves for battle. And my husband is studying about this, He's, or, or he did in one of his classes, wrote a paper about the full armor of God. And one of his hypotheses is that the full armor, the reason why it's the full armor of God, is if you are missing one piece of your armor, I mean, how many of you watch a, you know, a movie where there's a battle? Everybody has on their full armor. They don't leave off their hat. They don't leave their sword home. You know, they, they always have their breastplate on. We have got to be fully equipped every single day. Now, if you are not ever under attack, you need to question how, how much you're doing for the Lord because the enemy is going to see and notice when you are moving forward in the Lord and when you are um, plugging away at taking people out of his kingdom. So, you know, whenever you are a threat to the enemy, he's going to turn on you and he is going to battle against you. So if you are having spiritual warfare, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're doing anything wrong. I mean, you can open doors um, through, through habitual sin and things like that. You can open doors to be attacked by demons, but you don't have to have an open door in your life for demonic attack. The Bible says, and you know, talking about in the Beatitudes, I've been preaching on that on Sunday. The Bible says, when you are righteous, when you have a pure heart, when you see God, you are going to have persecution. You are going to be persecuted by people who are um, being propelled to persecute you by demons because demons hate God. So when you begin to appear like God, when you begin to reflect the glory of God more and more, you put a target on your back for demons. And so demons are real. I posted something on my wall. If most of you guys may have seen it, I don't know. Um, I came across somebody's status on Facebook. And recently I had just uh, accepted a bunch of friend requests on my personal page while my public page was being demonetized and anyway so she has typically posted things that you would just think a good Christian person would post and she posted something that was completely 
completely unbiblical. She said Satan is not real. Satan is a state of, he's not a being. He's a state of being. And we are not, we do not need to have conversion. We are already converted. I don't know how exactly how she worded it. We just have to believe it. Well, that's not true. And it's not in the word. And it's clearly not in the word. We have to be converted. We have to be born again. That was Jesus' own word. She said she followed Jesus. And when I commented on it, she said that she no longer believes that the word is, you know, the inspired, inherent, infallible word of God. She doesn't believe that. She believes that Jesus is the word. Well, everything we know about Jesus is from the Bible. So if you don't believe the Bible is true, then your whole Christianity has no leg to stand on. <laughs> it's like the whole, our faith is... That's, that's where we've learned it. That's how God decided to get the information to us. Okay, Lord, help me stay focused here because i got to talk about um, the, the armor. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the way that the enemy attacks us is by attacking our mind, attacking our heart, attacking our identity, attacking our provision, um, attacking our security and the things that we're secure of. So if you do not know the word of God, you are going to fall under these attacks. You are going to be anxious, depressed, worried, poor, you know, not in a good way. Like you're going to have a hard time accessing the kingdom um, provision. You're going to have a hard time walking in the... Um, understanding of who you are in Christ and so I want to just kind of quickly I'm going to pray and I want to go over some things that I think are going to help us so oh Jesus Lord God I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this word would empower people encourage people that it would inspire people that we would put on the full armor of God every single day of our lives so that we can stand against all the schemes of the enemy. Lord, we know that warfare is coming. Warfare is here. Good morning, John. And listen, Matthew 7, 15 says, Be careful of false prophets. They come to you looking like gentle sheep, but they are really dangerous wolves. A lot of the ways... The enemy knows if you are a believer that you have a heart to do good. You have a heart to love. So if you don't know the word, the enemy will say, it's not loving to tell people that they're going to hell. It's not loving. You are more gracious than God. You are more loving than God. Did God really say that you will go to hell if you're not born again? Did God really say if you don't repent for your sins that you're going to go to hell? No, God wouldn't say that because he's not loving. Okay, if we think that we're more loving and more merciful than God, <laughs> we got an ego problem. And this is where a lot of this false stuff is coming in. We're not looking at the Word of God, and the Word of God shows us God's character, and we know that God is love. So if what we think is love is more loving than God, then we're wrong. <laughs> so we got to know the Word because... They're going to look real good. They're going to look real sweet, these teachers, you know. It, you know, you can't tell people that. That's going to cause them to feel bad about themselves and their sin. We don't want to make people feel bad about their sin. What, what is more loving? To tell people the truth and save them from the fire? <laughs> or to tell people what makes them have real good feelings right now? So this is just one example that's coming to mind how much we have got to know the truth of God's word because it's huge. So the, the other thing that God is saying, we need to pray every day. We need to pray for each other. The Bible tells us to pray for all the saints. I pray for you all. Pray for all the saints. Put all the saints throughout the world in your prayers because there are people going through it. People going through it throughout the world. There are people that are being slaughtered for their faith. There are people who are, are having to battle all kinds of things. Our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, we need to be praying for each other. And so that's one of the things that we need to um, just really, really, really pray. <sighs> okay, now I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 11 through 12 in the New Living Translation. 
put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Demons are real. They are entities. They are beings. They are created beings. I have seen them with my own wide awake, wide open eyes. They are real. They are real. The demons that I saw looked like what they represented. I've seen a demon of gluttony. It was fat. I've seen a demon of lust. It was, it looked like a succubus. It looked like a woman that had been dead for a while with, you know, just a little bit of stringy hair and the, the mushy, translucent, dead looking skin. Demons are real. And they hate us. And they slither around looking for cracks looking for us not to have a, our full armor on. And this is not to fear people, but they're there. Demons are there. You have angels assigned to your life. But you know what? You also have uh, demons assigned to your life. So, uh, let me see if I can block this person. <sighs> okay, no, they're not there. All right, Jesus. Okay. Okay. So, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen realm. This is Colossians 1, 16. And I think it's important that we understand there are heavenly realms. There are levels of authority. They are high Ranking demons, there are low-ranking demons. When you become more immature in your Christian faith, you might not struggle with the same demonic spirits that you had in lower levels and lower realms. And this is why some of these spiritual teachers, these guides, end up in deception. They might have had lower-ranking demons, lust and, you know, alcoholism or you know, these fleshly demons, and they've overcome those, and then the enemy will send out higher-ranking demons. You know, Leviathan is a high-ranking demon that comes as the Holy Spirit speaking to, if there is pride in you, and you've been given some authority, you've been given some influence, if you are not putting that glory back on God, you open the door for these twisting spirits that will give you 90 5% of the truth or 90% of the truth and they'll throw in just enough in the right ways to use you to lead other people astray and to lead other people from the true God that will lead other people from repentance of sins that will lead other people from you know acts that are life inducing and the things that that create death. So, Lord God, even if we don't see the angels and the demons, I pray that you would make every person under the sound of my voice aware of the spiritual battle that is going on. And listen, I advise when you are praying and interceding, there are things that you need to know. If you go and you don't have your own garden cleaned out, and you go praying you know, walking through Washington, D.C., pray against these, you know, spiritual forces over our nation and such, you could really open yourself up to some serious spiritual warfare that you're not ready for. As a intercessor, I'm not saying don't pray for a nation, but I'm saying don't go try doing hand-to-hand -hand combat with, uh, you know, <laughs> you know uh, principalities or something when you, you can't even clean your own house. Like, you have to be careful. These are real demons. It is real war and spiritual warfare. It happens on our knees. You can always pray, Lord, send angels to this place. Lord, send angels to that place. And there's different teachings. Different teachers teach us a different way or have a different understanding. There's been teachers that I respect that will tell you you can do hand-to-hand -hand pound back with principalities. And there's, there's teachers that say, don't touch, don't even try to do that. You pray, 
personally, I pray against those things in a general way. And then I ask the Lord to send angelic hosts to war against the principalities over our nation, over our region. You know, I speak, I'll make decrees as the Lord puts them in my heart. Um, but I am fully aware that there are high ranking angels that God, if you look at Daniel's um, life as he prays for 21 days, you know, Michael is caught in the heavenlies with the prince of Persia trying to get to him, fighting, and couldn't get past, you know. So Daniel had been praying and fasting. He had done his part here on the earth to release this this um, this angel to, to come forth to him with the message from the Lord. But he got caught up in the heavenlies with this prince of Persia, which is a regional demon, a high-ranking demonic spirit. These spirits, I'm not saying you should be afraid of the devil or you should be afraid of spirits, but don't have a flippant attitude about spiritual warfare like it is not a thing. you got to get suited up. The enemy can't touch a Christian that has suited up every single day, but you got to make sure that you've got on the full armor. So, Ephesians 6.10, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. <sighs> so in Matthew 26, 28, we say, and remember the blood of Jesus is what makes your covenant relationship possible. My blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. We need to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives, to our situation. I pray, and my daughter prays this, and anybody who's been around me much ends up praying this because I pray all the time. I ple plead the blood of Jesus from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. When you don't know what else to pray, I've seen demons. I've been in spiritual warfare in my waking life and in my sleeping life and watched what happens to demonic spirits when you start talking and singing about the blood. I love some of these modern songs, but I like to sing about the blood of Jesus. I don't care how gory it sounds. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Take communion. Confess your sins. Apply the blood of Jesus covering you. Covering your sins. Washing you clean. It is the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus. You start praying like that and you're pushing back the forces of darkness off your life. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. They hate the name of Jesus and they hate to hear about the blood. So you feeling under attack one day, you just start singing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Just put on songs about the blood. You will feel better. The enemies will shrink back. They'll, they'll go away. They're not going to hang out while you're singing about the blood of Jesus, talking about the blood of Jesus. They won't do it. So that is just a, a little kingdom key right there. We can't be partially, partially dressed we got to be fully dressed for battle ephesians 6 11 put on all of god's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil lord help help us forgive us forgive those who have been ignorant about the the spiritual forces that are attacking their family you know you have demon spirits hate christian marriages they hate to see children being raised up in the Lord and they plan and they scheme and they look for any crack. So in prayer, and this is another prayer strategy I use a lot, Lord, reveal the enemy plots and plans against my life, my ministry, my finances, my family, you know, over the nation. Reveal the secret plots and plans of the enemy because who knows anything about war? If you understand how they're going to attack, you can avoid the attack. You can go around behind them. If you know their next move and their next strategy, they can't win unless you know it and don't do anything about it. So we pray the Lord, I pray the Lord reveal the strategies that the enemy has against you and your life and your family. And then he reveals his strategy about how, how to uh, counteract the enemy's strategy. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but instead against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen realm. 
finished. Jesus. Okay. The mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So it says enemies. Satan is not alone. He has demons. He has demons. They interact. You know, another thing that I pray is that the enemies would turn and fight themselves. That, that God would confuse the enemy camp and that they would fight against themselves and be destroyed. Just because they're um, well organized does not mean that demons are easy to get along with each other. I believe that just like demon possessed people, they fight amongst themselves and God can confuse them and God can cause them to turn on each other. So we pray that the Lord confuses the enemy and that they fight themselves and that they destroy their plots and plans within their own camp against our lives. Dear children, you belong to God and have defeated them because God's spirit who is in you is greater than the devil who is in the world. That's 1 John 4, 4. And that is the uh, New Kingdom version, I think. <clears throat> the, the evil powers have no authority or power against God and God's spirit lives on the inside of us. And as we live from God's spirit, the enemy has no power over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim the power of God and we take a stand against the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus in our lives. And we are victorious in all these things. We are more than conquerors. The enemy is under our feet. Satan is defeated. Demons are defeated. We call enemy plans null and void in the mighty name of Jesus. For this reason, take up all the armor that God supplies. Then you will be able to stand firm during these evil days. And once you have overcome all obstacles, you will be able to stand your ground. Listen, we're going to talk about the belt of truth. So then, take your stand, fasten truth about, around your waist like a belt. We've got to put truth on. Like the, uh, we got to lean on the strength of God and we got to know the word of God, which is the truth. If we don't know the truth, how are we going to be free? It's the, it's the truth that sets us free. Absolute truth of God's word. Um, so Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we acknowledge your truth. We acknowledge and accept your word as true. We apply your truth to our life. Whenever we hear a thought that does not sound like the truth, we, we find out if what we're thinking are, is true or not. And if it's not, we discard that thought. We change our thoughts. We change our mind. We repent. We turn from the way that we were looking things. We, ha we want to have the mind of Christ. We want to have your view of things. We want to hear your word and we want to believe your word and we want to apply your word to our life. We want truth. Lord, we love the truth. We love the truth. We do not love a lie. We do not love shadows and darkness and hiding. We come into the light so that what we have done and what we are doing is visible and can be seen by all because we don't want to hide in darkness. We don't want to hold on to our sin, Lord God. We want you to expose it to us. Expose us, Lord, so that we can be creatures of the light. We don't want to be like demons hiding in the night, hiding in the dark places. Lord God, we are children of light and we walk in the light as you are in the light. And you keep us from all sin. You keep us from stumbling. You strengthen us against every plot and plan. You deliver us from the power of sin and death. We put our flesh under our feet. We do not love the world or anything in the world. And we put our hope in you. We put our trust in you. And we are standing. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6, 14. And this is protecting our heart. We have been made righteous. Lord God, we pray that you forgive all of our unrighteousness. All of our sin. We plead the blood of Jesus. We, by an act of our faith, take the, a spiritual bloodbath. 
Lord God, cleanse us in the deepest part. Go into the recesses of our minds and our hearts that we aren't even aware of, that have bad attitudes, that have wrong mindsets. Take away everything in us that does not look like you, Lord. Blast out every lie. Go into every little nick and cranny in our soul. Align us with your spirit. Help us to walk in the righteousness which you have died for us to have. Help us to hunger and thirst to be in that righteousness, to walk in that righteousness. Help us to love mercy, God. Give us a pure heart, God. Cleanse us. Cleanse our um, hearts, Lord God. We cleanse our hands before you and repentance and, and, and turning and we go forward in faith. We leave those things that are behind behind us and we press on to the good that is ahead. We cast off all mourning, all shame. We pick up the garment of praise and we rejoice in you always and we rejoice in the victory that we have in you and we rejoice in the hope that we have in you and we are thankful and grateful for all of the blessings, the food that you have put on our plate, the roof that you have put over our head, the 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 wonderful gift of salvation that you've given us that we should be called the sons and daughters of God. We are grateful in all these things and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. It's the shoes of peace in most translations, but it's the gospel of peace. Jesus. Firm footed stability happens when you know the word of God. If you're going to get tripped up, you are going to fall. You are going to hear these Preachers, teachers, friends, family members saying stuff that sounds real loving, real good, real, you know, yeah, that should be what God would say. But if it's not, <laughs> you're going to trip. You're going to fall. <sighs> Jesus. Help us to bring the peace of God in every situation. Lord, I pray that you would make us gracious people. I know I can grow in grace. Every single day we can grow in grace. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, to be gracious. Help us, Lord, to be gracious. In addition to all of this, all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the enemy. Lord, I pray for our faithlessness, Lord God. I pray for our doubt. I, I pray forgiveness. For our doubt and unbelief, deliver us. God, we believe. Help our unbelief. I pray that you would anoint us with faith to face every battle with holy confidence of your goodness, of your faithfulness. Strengthen us in our inner man. Pour out faith over us this day, Lord, that we would walk by faith, that we would talk by faith, that we would think by faith, that we would act by faith. Lord God, help us to be faithful. Help us to have faith. Help us to hold up the shield of faith that's going to really block a lot of these lies that the enemy throws at us and, and all, just all the arrows. And so the helmet of salvation, accept God's salvation as your helmet. You know, the helmet protects the mind. The mind is where we make this decision. We are going to find out what God requires of us and we're going to do it. We're going to put on that helmet of salvation. We are going to make the decision to follow Jesus no matter where he leads us. So my husband had a dream night before last that I'll share real quickly that I believe it's a good parable for all of us. He was following his father and he realized when he woke up that the, his father in the dream was actually symbolic of God. He was following his father home back to his father's house and his father was taking all these side roads and stuff and scenic routes <laughs> and he remembers you know just bebopping along enjoying the ride behind his dad and you know so one point they went through a tunnel and it seemed like his dad was showing him that he could throw his voice and it would echo throughout the tunnel and, and Dave did that I can't remember some of the other things that happened but the gist of the dream was 
at one point there was a nine-year-old girl and the father introduced her to Dave and Dave just instinctively knew it was a family member and he just loved her like a family member and so he just brought her with him and they were going to do like a Tarzan thing where they had vines that were going to jump off this cliff and, and swing and and the nine-year-old girl was on my husband's back and his father jumped and Dave jumped and they were swinging 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 and then they kind of came to a stop and Dave was like 40 feet up in the air and he was like well now what <laughs> you know there's nowhere to put my feet and he asked his father what do I do what do I do and his father said nothing and the and the vine broke and Dave just started to fall and he woke up like you know when you're falling and we were talking about that dream and this is really he was falling to his death this is the way you enter the kingdom <laughs> you don't have anywhere to put your feet you know <laughs> like except on the Lord and on faith in his word you know you just let go and you just fall and you just trust that he is leading you home and that it is through even your own spiritual your your own dying to yourself that you live that's how you enter the kingdom and so that just came to my mind. I thought that was a pretty cool dream. <sighs> so take up the sword of the spirit. And take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's the only weapon that Jesus used against Satan. It's a it's it's the only weapon that we need to 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 speak the word and to walk in it. And and the enemy can't touch us there. Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That you would forgive each and every one of us for not attending to your word like we should. Not meditating on your word. Taking for granted our access to your word. Lord God, put a hunger in us. Put a desire in us to know you. To know your word. Put a hunger in us to, to walk in righteousness. So I'm going to, um, once we're suited up in our armor, I'm going to read a couple of more scriptures. It's going to help um, just really get the word in us to start the day off this morning. So Ephesians 6, 18, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Do the dishes. Okay, you might, if you don't have a gift of tongues, you can pray, you can sing in the spirit. You can, you can just pray spiritual prayers. You can, you know, thank you, God. I worship you, Lord. I praise you, God. Your mercies are new every day. Your faithfulness goes beyond anything I could ever imagine. Thank you for the blood. Thank you. Thank you. You just begin to praise the Lord for all the things he's done, all the things he's in the process of doing. He is meeting every need. I thank you, God, that you are speaking to the right people, that you are aligning me with the right people, that you are opening doors that no man can shut. Lord, you are healing my body. You are healing my marriage. You are healing my children. You are strengthening me in my inner man. You are making me a blessing everywhere I go. You are providing me with seed because I'm a sower. Lord God, you are causing abundance in my uh, in my finances, even as my soul prospers, so that I can do more for you, Lord. I thank you for more opportunities to give. I thank you, God, for awakening my spirit to see what you're doing in the earth. And I thank you, God, for leading and guiding me that you haven't left me as an orphan. I thank you, God, that you are always, always, always thinking up wonderful things to do for those whose heart is right towards you, Lord God. I thank you for making my heart right. I thank you for cleansing me, Lord God. I thank you for delivering me, Lord God. I thank you for working in this person's life and that person's life. And just go on and on throughout your day. It is. It will just become such a habit. You'll just be praying all day, praying in your sleep. I talked about that that older gentleman that I um, watched him die. He just scripture after scripture came forth, blessing after blessing came forth. You know, death was squeezing him, and what was coming out was the the beautiful, lovely, peaceful assurance and the word of God as he died on his deathbed. Just the words bubbled up out of him. It's beautiful. I've been with many elderly people dying. I work with elderly people. Not everybody dies the same. <clears throat> 
Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. I already mentioned that. And pray for me, too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. Lord God, we pray for all of those that are anointed for ministry, that you give them the words, Lord God, that you strengthen them in their family, that you protect them from temptation, God. Oh, sabake soraku soraku sonamaha seki 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 saku sorabaku sorabaku sorabaki ki sete Lord, we thank you that you have given us such a strategy that you haven't placed us here with no help, no hope, that we have been given strategy, that we have been given every equipped. We have been given authority. God has given us authority to Enact his will on the earth. We pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we be prepared to make that happen. And to be the vessels through which his will is done in the earth. God does his work through his people in the earth. That is how he has limited himself. A lot of times we're waiting for God to move. And he's waiting for us to move or somebody else to move. Because he has limited himself in the earth to work through human beings. So much so, in order to even save the earth, he had to come to earth and take on the form of a man to even bring salvation to us. Because the way that he designed things and sets things in motion, and he's very, very, he can, he can break through, he could do miracles, but he has set things in motion and he has put limits within on him own self and he's a limitless God he can do what he wants to but he is he has he's bound by his word and I wouldn't even call it bound he this is how he does it we pray he moves we decree he moves we work he moves <laughs> God lives in us we are his temple we are his ambassadors and his Holy Spirit is in us. God is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. I mean, he might come and visit us here and there. I've had a visitation. But the Holy Spirit living in us is how God works in the earth. And so we have a priority to, to protect the good deposit, to honor that deposit that's been put on the inside of us to honor god with our bodies to honor god with our resources to honor god with our time we are not our own we have been bought with a price therefore honor god with our bodies honor god and so lord help us to understand who we are what it means to be your children what responsibilities and what favor and what access and what strength and what power. Lord God, help us to live all optimally. L help us to raise up to everything that we are able to be in you. Help us, God, to become exactly what you had in mind when you began to form us in our mother's womb. Lord, help us to be pliable and humble in your hand so that you can work out the lumps, that you can soften the hard places, that you can mold us and shape us into objects that are um, made for noble purposes, Lord God, in the earth. And that doesn't just mean, you know, earthly status. God's objects of mercy, which we are, are used however he sees fit. And we, we know that wherever he has placed us, Whatever he uses us for, we're going to be supremely happy if we submit to that. We're not going to be any happier in anybody else's place because he has created us individually with a purpose. There's no reason to be jealous. There's no reason to compare. God has an individual, wonderful plan for our lives. There is more than enough of God to go around. This is why we don't be jealous of somebody else's provision. This is a a socialist lie actually that crumbles on his on itself and we can see it, it operating in the earth when people want what other people have what other people worked for without doing what they did to get it 
when they think that it's unfair if one person has more than somebody else and then they try to get it through means other than through the Lord and through their own work, then nobody, it, the whole thing, it folds in on itself. That's not how it works. God has a portion for each one of us. And, and, and if you want what somebody else has as far as like financial stuff, do what they did. Now, I'm cer certainly people are born into wealth, but it's just a spiritual principle, whether it's financial wealth, whether it's peace, whether it's a good marriage, that stuff doesn't just fall on people. We have got to understand that we have access to the power of God, that we can walk in that authority, and whatever portion He has given us, we can walk in the fullness of it. Now, to one He gives one, to one He gives two, to one He gives five, He gives to each according to their ability, and, it, and we are not all equal in that. And there's no government on earth who's going to be able to change that fact. We are not all given the same amount of responsibility or the same amount of anything. God has portioned to each of us as he wills. And this is not just talking about finances. This is talking about spiritual truths that are in the Bible that Jesus talks about. And that those who have been given more, there is more that is expected. There's more responsibility. There is more pressure. <laughs> so just live up to what you've already obtained. Just take what God has given you and do the very best you can with it and multiply it so that you will have more to give to others in every way. More peace, more love, more mercy, more provision. Allow whatever God has given you to multiply. He can sh multiply you. He can stretch. He can expand. And when we're faithful over little, he will give us more. It's an upside down kingdom. It's an upside down kingdom. We can't get in the Word and really just do a kingdom study of what is the kingdom. What does it mean? It's all throughout Jesus' parables. He's explaining the kingdom, how it works, how you enter it, how you operate in it. And it just goes against all human convention. And it just turns our world upside down. Lord, I pray, God, for all of your kingdom people that we would operate as the royal priesthood that we are, the brotherhood of the saints that we are, that there would be no greed, that there would be no pride, that there would be no hatred, that there would be no dissension, that you would bring unity, that you would bring peace, that you would strengthen us, that you would empower us by your spirit to know how wide and great and deep your love is for us. And Lord God, I pray that you would strengthen us against temptation, that you would cause us to remember every single day to put on the full armor of God, that you would show us enemy plans, that you would give us prayer strategies and spiritual warfare strategies to overcome every obstacle, to put every attack to turn it back on itself, Lord God, that we would press on, that we would press forward, that we would run the race to win, that we would run our own race, that we wouldn't compare, that there would be no jealousy, that there would be no greed and, uh, uh, um, you know, even gossip among your people, that we would be united, that we would reveal and, um, those things that need to be revealed. Lord God, reveal them in your body, in your people, in our individual lives. Help us to walk in the light as you are in the light. Thank you for perfecting us. Thank you for uniting us. Thank you for strengthening us, empowering us. Thank you, God. We ask that you send more angels into our lives, more angels into the battlefield, into our nation, into our communities, into our home. Lord, protect us. We put the blood of Jesus on our doorpost, on our bodies, on our families, on our marriages. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that the angel of death will pass over. That we would die to ourselves once and for all and be reborn 
actually it's a time and time again i i believe you know it's a one it, you're born again one time but then you have to die to yourself throughout your life help us to do that in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we want to live the higher life we want to live in the kingdom we want to operate in kingdom principles we want kingdom abundance in our life in the mighty name of jesus i'm just going to mention we're doing december 5th we are having a christmas festival at kingdom living ecclesia academy if you guys are anywhere near you should come there's not a whole lot of christmas stuff out there and it's going to be really fun we got a fire pit we got some heaters we're setting up um tables and uh like patio furniture and stuff out there and we're free food uh music and christmas uh, decorations and fellowship it's gonna be awesome so you guys come to that if you're able to December 5th 3 to 8 people will be coming and going I'm sure or you can come and stay the whole time you can come and help us if you want to anything else okay that's all I love you guys you can go to the website if you want to learn more about the ministry request prayer uh, become a partner uh, sign up for a counseling session you can do that all through the um, the website. So I love you guys. We'll talk later.